Yo, has anyone checked the the date recently, or maybe the uh, maybe the time? I think it's uh, I think it's about time I put you on to SAT reading. I right? today is the day that we take in the SAT scores, everything that we've built on from the math in the past, and we're gonna take that reading section. We're gonna drill it down to a perfection. Let's keep it a stack. If you look anything like me, if you're Asian, you have immigrant parents, the SAT reading section just doesn't come naturally. How many times have you heard a brown kid say they're good at math, but they're not good at reading? How many times have we said that growing up or in preparation for the SAT? The first step to perfecting the SAT reading section is to change the way you think about the exam. But Pratik, uh, Pratik, we're a minute into the video and you haven't given us any tips yet. Can you give me some SAT tips, Pratik? I will guide you to get a 1500 plus score consistently, but I need your undivided attention for the next two minutes. The type of viewer to skip this section is the same type of person to take their SAT and then come back to my video six months later asking for tips to apply to an Ivy League school with a 1200 score. Best believe when I see that comment, I am not replying to it. There are two key ideas that you want to embrace into your personality if you want to succeed on the SAT reading. First, the reason I'm so against this Asian mentality of, I'm good at math, but I can't write a single coherent sentence, is because not learning how to develop a strong control of the English language in high school is a decision that will haunt you for the rest of your life. You gain the respect of others when you can coherently write your ideas down onto paper. You can express them in a way that's formulaic and in a quality manner. It's understandable by other people. Do you know how beneficial it is to have the ability to discern the key ideas of a scientific paper or to read books and truly comprehend what the underlying messaging is? These are skills that you can actually develop and glean from the SAT if you approach your studying the right way. The SAT isn't just some vague test that you have to get out the way, but but it's also an opportunity for you to build skills that can benefit you in life. I promise you I'm not some college board sellout, but there's legitimately value in developing these skills, and the SAT is one of the easiest ways to streamline that while you're in high school. Now my second point is much more directly related to the SAT reading section. I want to break down one of the biggest fallacies I've heard out there in regards to this. A lot of times, people, my friends, uh, people who subscribe to this channel, they'll come to me asking this question. They'll say, Pratik, the math section is easy because there's just one clear, definite answer. But a lot of times the reading section, it's up to interpretation, there's multiple correct answers, that's what makes it so hard. I'm telling you right now that that statement is complete BS. Think about it for a second. The SAT is a big exam. There are millions and millions of dollars of scholarships on the line each year. If College Board actually released a question with two blatantly correct answers, that one decision could completely derail the future of kids, like of actual students, by not meeting cutoffs for thresholds uh, of scholarships, not being able to get money from different schools. College Board would get sued if they were to release a question like that. And so in response to that, they have entire teams of English majors vetting every single question. If there are 20 of these College Board staff workers working on a single passage, all 20 of them need to be able to read the passage and answer the question correctly and be able to exactly explain the logic to why they got there with a level of consistency among each of the employees. That's the level of work that they put into every single question. So when it comes down to those reading questions, I want you to remember through the rest of your SAT prep that there is always one correct answer, one blatantly correct answer, and three blatantly incorrect answers. Out of those four options that you're looking at, one answer is clearly markedly better. And you need to be able to understand that it's not up to just some interpretation or trying to make a best call judgment. There's one answer there that is truly the correct one, and you need to be able to discern that. We're now in the part of the video that most of you are here for. How do you actually approach the SAT reading in order to get the highest scores? The way that I do the SAT reading is legitimately the way I believe it's meant to be taken. That's why it's so effective at getting near perfect scores, if not perfect scores, almost every single time. Here's what you're going to want to do. I truly do not believe in 
any form of logic or test-taking technique that doesn't involve starting an SAT section without reading the passage. There is legitimately no logical reason for why you should start an SAT passage by reading the questions. It, like, just try it out a couple times and you'll realize how stupid it is. If you start a passage without reading the passage or really knowing what it's about, you try to read that one sentence blurb at the top, and then you just read the questions, there is no shot you actually remember all of the questions, go to the passage, read the passage after skimming it, answer the questions, you're flipping back and forth, you're getting a bunch of stuff wrong along the way, you're guessing, it just doesn't work. So here's what you're going to want to do. You want to minimize the actual time spent on reading the passage and maximize the time you spend answering the questions, right? That's how you're going to be able to get the best scores. So in a strange way, what we're going to do is we're going to flip the script a little bit here. That's the goal. But in order to reach that goal of spending less time reading and more time working on the questions, we're actually going to spend more time reading and less time on the questions. When you open an SAT passage, the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take out your pencil right here. You're gonna look at the passage. You're going to read it slowly and in depth. Your goal is to truly grasp the meaning of it. If it's a story, you're gonna read through the entire story. If it's a, a scientific passage or paper, you're going to truly glean what the main point of that is. You're going to take your pencil and as you're reading through that passage, you're going to underline everything, right? Now, when you underline and you text mark, okay, you don't actually do it with the intent of like, oh, I'm going to star this fancy word or do No, all you do is you literally use the pencil just to keep yourself focused. Because if you're just doing something, right, low key because of TikTok and all the social media stuff, all of us like have like borderline ADHD. So just using the pencil is just going to keep you even more focused and you're going to spend four to five minutes reading the passage. After you spend that much time, which is a longer amount of time than anyone on the internet really recommends, but I'd say cap it at about five minutes, you're gonna truly know what the passage is about. So then once you've actually read it and you understand the passage, when you go to the questions, you'll realize that you don't actually have to flip back to the text. If anything, what I recommend is that you don't even bother. You read the question, and when you read the question, you read the answer options, you'll know, okay, they didn't bring that up in the text, that's wrong, that's probably wrong as well. Oh, hang on, they did bring up that point in the text, that makes sense, that's correct. You circle it, you bubble it in, you move on to the next question. The only time you'll even need to flip back to the actual text is when they have those sentence answers, where they're like, okay, in lines like blank to blank, this to this, then at that point you're like skimming back a little bit. But that's okay, because you're not rereading sections. That way, the reason this is so effective is that you're able to just skip all the time of having to dig back through the text for the answers because you already have it up here. You spent that extra time, you invested it into reading the passage so you truly understand and dissect that meaning so you can just answer the questions. The thing is, this is a skill that just takes practice to improve upon. But once you actually like build that skill, the cap on this is at the ceiling. When you do those other techniques where you read the questions, those are techniques that have been developed effectively for low scorers. When you're able to tell someone who like doesn't have the actual reading ability to truly even understand what the, the passage or you know, a text is saying, and you tell them to do this, they might be able to at least out of eight questions or nine questions, get like five, maybe six questions correct by just guessing and eliminating and doing the easy questions. If you actually wanna be a top scorer, bro, you can't be getting three questions wrong on every passage out of like five passages on the exam, 15 questions you miss, like you're, you're in immediately down into the 13, 1400 range. So that's why you're gonna have to learn how to master this strategy. Now, once you get this test-taking technique down, and it's just gonna take practice, right? If you want, you can rewatch this section of the video, truly understand it. Now we can dive into exactly how you practice and build up the skill in order to get to that near-perfect reading score every single time. If we're being completely honest here, another reason that people just don't like the SAT reading section in general is because it's actually a lot harder to see the tangible results and gains in your score. When you study for the math section of the SAT, it's almost like there's a finite block of studying time that you really need in order to get an 800 because it's just the number of concepts you need to learn and the little amount of practice you need to do. But the thing about the SAT reading is this, your score truly does increase proportionally to the amount of time that you study. It just takes practice in order to build reading comprehension skills. It's not something that can just be like an on-off math formula, yes, no type thing, but really you need to be able to practice discerning the key idea from different passages. So how do you do that and how do you do that effectively? Now we've established that practice is key, but where do you get the practice materials? If you look online, there are literally an infinite number of passages. You could probably spend the next decade doing 
reviewing every single textbook passage out there and you still wouldn't get through everything. So make use of those resources. But here's exactly where I think you should start. Every textbook has their own style of SAT reading passages. A lot of them, honestly, a lot of them are really not great indicators of the type of passages you will see on the actual college board exams. So the passages that you get from the uh, like the Khan Academy official tests are going to be the best ones you have. Now, if you've watched my last SAT videos, you'll understand that you have to save those best tests for when you're directly preparing for the exam. Those should be the last practice exams that you lose leading up until the exam. So if you want to just get started, if you want to get like the bang for your buck, I recommend buying the Princeton Review SAT uh, like reading, like just general textbook. The Princeton Review Gold Standard textbook, I have a picture on screen right now. That textbook is really great for SAT writing and SAT math. The reading is okay, but the thing is, if you're gonna use the textbook for the other two, I recommend just buying it and using it for the reading anyways. It's going to be a little bit harder, but it's fine. Like, you'll make do with it. I don't really like the, the Kaplan book. I felt like it was way too hard. I've tried the Barron's book as well. The Barron's one was, was solid, but here's where I'm gonna put you on to like like the secret sauce, okay? So for the bulk practice, you're just gonna do a mix of like textbook work, okay? I I'm sorry I can't give you like the exact textbook to go and buy, but just go ahead and try things because every brand works slightly differently for people. So check out those brands I've talked about. You do the bulk practice on the Khan Academy and whatever resources are out there online. Just try different things out and just get as much volumetric practice in as you can to, to really hone down these skills. Now, here's the secret sauce. As you're going through your practice, you're going to slowly realize what you're good at and what you're not good at. So here's how you're gonna break down your practice, right? You're going to start doing your SAT practice by taking more time to read the, the actual passages. So I told you five minutes cap. When you're just getting started and learning how to do the SAT, it's okay if you take six, seven, eight minutes to practice. As long as after those eight minutes, you truly understand what the passage is saying and you go and you answer the questions correctly. You're just building the skill over time. Now here's what you're gonna do from there. As you keep practicing, you're cutting down on the time that you're spending on the passages, you're getting better, you're more effective. You go through the easy passages, and you're truly getting like some of these passengers slowly getting perfect scores on. You're going to realize that you're actually better at some types of passages than you are at others. It's just a fact. I personally didn't really feel that there was any specific question type that was tripping me up. And if that does happen, that's almost an easy skill to fix. You can just practice that skill on like a little Khan Academy uh, practice set. They do a great job with those little uh, specific skills. But for the bulk passages, this was the wall that I ran into. A lot of times when you're doing your SAT practice sex tests in general, you're going to hit like the 1500 wall where you're getting like pretty good math scores, maybe around like a 780. And then the remaining uh, like 720 points you're gonna get from your, your reading writing section. And really it's gonna be your reading section that's hindering you. And you're gonna wonder why. A lot of times those old English passages, those old history passages, those old story passages, the ones that are written in like the 1700s that honestly you'd never encounter in your everyday life, those are the passages that are just the toughest, okay? They were the toughest for me, they're the toughest for a lot of people. And here's what differentiates the people who get the sub 1550s from the people who get the above 1550s. It's your ability to get past that stopping point. Now, you need to be an adaptable test taker. You need to be an adaptable person in life. So when you run into these problems, think, what can I possibly do to get past this hurdle? Now, I got the answer for you this time. This textbook on screen. I've probably built up maybe like two minutes of talking to this textbook. This might be the single greatest SAT textbook that's out there, and literally nobody talks about it. This book contains 40, 40, 40, passages that include like old English, old history, fiction passages. I want you to buy that textbook when you reach that wall, after you've done your bulk practice. And I want you to go through and do every single passage out of that textbook. This textbook single-handedly bumped my score from being in the 1500 range up into the 1550, 1560 range. It, like in 50, 60 points might not seem like much, but I literally made that jump in two weeks. Like it was two weeks before my, uh, two or three weeks before my exam when I was, my reading was a little sus and I'm like, man, these old English passages are so hard. What do I do? I discovered this textbook off of Amazon. I bought like the Kindle version. Don't buy the Kindle version. You're going to buy everything in paper. If I haven't said this yet in the video, all your tests, you're going to do them on paper. Your reading comprehension, it's scientifically proven to increase when you do it on paper and you can actually practice text marking. Buy that shit 
on paper and you're gonna text mark the ex a real textbook and do it. It's so, so good. Like I, this, if you've watched this far into the video and you actually take this advice, but I'm gonna give you a kiss right now. Once you start using that textbook, you will be like this thanking me in the comment section for what I just put you onto. Use that textbook, abuse it, get those passages down to perfection. If it's not those passages that are truly like stopping you, and for most Asian kids it is, but if it is the science passages, that same company I believe has an actual book that's more for like the science type uh, passages and for being able to break down those more like research article types. And then you can get better at that as well. Maybe even buy both textbooks, right? I didn't try the other one, but maybe that's gonna be a great way to, to overall holistically boost your score. That way, once you're finally done with all of these different forms of prep, you should be able to get your SAT score to out of 52 questions, you should be able to get around 50 questions correct every single time. And that's the thing about uh, the SAT test as a whole. You are generally able to get your math section perfect and even the writing section perfect. But the main wild card on the actual exam is how well you perform on the reading section. Sometimes the passages are just tricky, sometimes, they're not, and it's based on that that you're gonna get that perfect 1600 score. So don't beat yourself over it, up over it, like as you might over getting like silly mistakes on like the math sections, but truly like embrace this reading technique, doing your bulk practice with these uh, all these textbooks I've recommended, and you will see your score just shoot up to the stars. Last word of advice for my top 1% subscribers, the SAT reading section is made out to be way harder than it actually is. I'm legitimately telling you right now, the test is designed for 15 and 16 year olds. Like it's it's not that hard. The thing is it seems difficult at first because you're not able to truly grasp the idea of what legitimate reading comprehension means. I remember reading like very, very easy passages and just simply like not remembering the important details because I was so used to skimming passages my entire life. My whole life, I just skimmed books. I just, like when we do like textbook reading and stuff, I just skim everything because it's so much more efficient for those kinds of tasks. But when it comes to the SAT, really being able to read every single word. And when I take my SAT exams, I wouldn't just read like in my mind. Like legitimately, I'd kind of like, like softly, almost in like a whisper tone with my kind of my mouth open, I just read the entire passages, slowly like underlining different uh, words and sentences and stuff going through it. And by doing that, I was able to truly take my reading comprehension to the next level. I was actually able to read passages and answer the questions with a level of flow to them. I wasn't sitting here thinking so deeply or flipping back all the time. It just comes naturally. All it is is practice. You'll get there. That's pretty much it for the video. Uh, last thing I wanted to say is uh, I don't usually like ask people to like sub or whatever. If you want to support the channel, you can. But I'm not going to lie. I legitimately, this making this video has been so hard. Like I've maybe sat down to record this SAT reading video like four times. I've been kicked out of the library. I've had like people over the intercom talking. I've had like 17 dudes like walk up and knock on this room. But I literally had to convince the librarian to give me a group study room just for me because everything in the library is booked right now because people are studying for exams. So like if you were going to drop a like on this video or like a little supportive comment, I'd really, really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. Uh, maybe share it with a friend. But thank you all so much for watching. This has been your boy Pratik. Like, comment, subscribe. You boys out.